Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl is presented by UFC Fight Pass. See the best that UFC Fight Pass has to offer on the Fight Pass 24-7 stream, offering a constant channel of historic fight action all day, all night. Tune in, sit back, and enjoy a network created by fans for fans. Step into our world. UFCFightPass.com Hey guys, welcome back to Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl, presented by UFC Fight Pass, the show that interviews top-level MMA fighters and other experts in their fields about love, dating, romance, and that all-too-taboo subject, sex. I'm your host, Ashley Rebel Girl Evan Smith. Now let's talk about sex and violence. What's happening, hot stuff? What's up, my naughty listeners? We are back in the studio. I am very excited. This is actually our first full video episode, so please excuse us as we work out the kinks and tweaks and whatnot. But we're started, we're getting on it, and um, we can't tell you exactly where this content's gonna be, but um, you know that we are partnered and presented by UFC Fight Pass, so a lot of cool things are gonna be happening on there. And this is the part of the show where it's before the guest interview, and I call it the Ash Update. It's basically what's going on with my life. You get to know me, your host a little bit better, and it uh, gives me a chance to talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. And right now, I'm probably going to keep it very short and sweet so we can work on the technical aspect of the episode. Um, but there's uh, things that I tell you guys every single week, and it really does help our show. And if you're a long-term listener, then you're probably tired of hearing it, but I'm going to say it anyway. So please check out our website, which is sexviolencewithrebelgirl.com, not sex and violence. Somebody else took that. <laughs> so sexviolencewithrebelgirl.com. We have merchandise. That's where all of our uh, library or catalog is. You can hear every single episode we've ever done. Uh, what else is on there? There's links uh, to autographs if you want autographs. I uh, can sign pictures, different things like that. And anything you buy, obviously helps the podcast grow and pays for studio fees and stuff like that. So uh, check us out on sexviolencewithrebelgirl.com. And then if you want to email us, that's sexandviolence at gmail.com. Oh, sorry, sexandviolencepodcast at gmail.com. And yes, I do see every single ep- uh, email on there. I check them and I answer back. Unless you're being a perv, then I don't answer back, but sometimes I do actually. <laughs> so email us if you have any guest suggestions uh, you would like to sponsor the show. We are always looking for new sponsors. Um, or if you just have like a funny story or even some comments about the podcast, you want to critique us, good or bad, I don't care. I'm always looking to get better. And then lastly, if you guys could pretty please rate and review the show. This takes two seconds and it makes the world of difference for us so go to your spotify apple deezer pod chaser whatever it is go give us a little review give us some stars it doesn't matter if it's one or five you know whatever your input is we appreciate it and it helps us move up on the charts so more people can discover us and listen to sex and violence and uh yeah so that's about it and um i'm gonna do one quick sponsor read right now and not really sure if you guys watching the video will see this but the audio podcast you guys will definitely hear this sponsor okay guys let me tell you about our newest sponsor of sex and violence podcast with rebel girl ea tax resolutions they are professionals that will help with tax issues and bookkeeping whether you're looking to settle your tax debt for less than you owe or have back taxes that you need to file, EA Tax Resolutions can help you out. Don't believe me? Check out their YouTube channel, EA Tax Resolutions, where they show exactly how they've helped clients in the past save thousands in taxes. Not only does EA Tax Resolutions help with tax issues, but with bookkeeping. Now, bookkeeping is commonly overlooked by small businesses, myself included, (laughs) as not being the most important. However, this is very crucial come tax time. Instead of scrambling for receipts, all your information is organized and, most importantly, accurate. So, 
If you have a small business and you're looking for a bookkeeper, EA Tax Resolutions can help you out. And remember, if you want to learn more about EA Tax Resolutions, you can visit their YouTube channel, EA Tax Resolutions, or call them at their 800 number, 1-800-245-0596. Again, 1-800-245-0596, or visit them at their website, eataxresolutions.com. Today's guest is a Colombian mixed martial artist who competes in the flyweight division. She's a UFC veteran and the former two-time LFA flyweight champion. The Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt holds a 9-4 record, trains out of Black House MMA, and is looking to earn her way back into the UFC. We talk about her LFA title fight and UFC return, benefits of training with other women, loves a bearded man, her new love for all things nutrition, clean teeth, a must, dealing with machismo men, daddy's girl, feet DMs and unwarranted dick pics, starting her own podcast, risking career for love, and much more. Here is your guest, Sabina, Colombian queen, Mazo. So we are here with the amazing, the talented, the beautiful Sabina Mazo. Sabina, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you today? And is that your brand new car? Yes, I'm <laughs> super happy. I'm super excited. I'm that excited I had to do the interview in the car, you know? <laughs> well, if you're going no, but... to you do it in a car, might as well be your brand spanking new car. <laughs> yes, yes. But yeah, I'm super good. I'm happy. I'm a little sick. Because of this crazy weather, but you know, I'm good. Okay. All right. Good. Well, I'm so excited. Uh, you know, you and I are teammates and I've been actually wanting to have you on the podcast, but I wanted to, you know, p- choose the right time. And um, it feels right now, be- it feels perfect right now because I actually just got back from your home city of Medellin, Colombia, and I really fell in love with it. And so let's just talk about that place for a second, because I haven't got to tell you that I just... Man, the people there, they were so friendly, you know, like in here in in America, I think everybody kind of stays in their own lane. Over there, you go into the elevator and everybody is like, buenas tardes. Like, you know, they (laughs) they greet you and you're like, do I know you? You know, and I'm like, and you get out of the elevator, they're like, goodbye. And I'm like, dude, I know that person. And then everybody (laughs) does it, you know, and there's a couple um, things like that that I noticed. And I'm like, wow, this is a really cool place. Yeah, well, you, you, by telling me that, it just reminds me of home. Because I'm so used to living here now that at the beginning, I did have that shock. Like, why is people so rude to me? Like, are they having like a bad day or something? Yeah. But it's normal, you know? But once, um, yeah, whenever I go back, I feel those little differences where people really, I don't know, they, they, they try to greet you or like have a conversation, you know, if you go to a store to buy something, you always end up talking about your life to someone that you don't even know. You yeah. know? So it is, it is kind of nice for sure. I, I want to hear you liked it. Like, I did. It? Oh man. Yeah. Everybody was very warm. That was something that was very different. Um, the weather was perfect. And I guess they call it the city of eternal spring, uh, which is, it was perfect it was like great weather we went horseback riding that was my first time horseback riding ever had a really good experience Uh um we went to with with party or just uh, horseback riding because what we do there normally is that well you can just horseback riding normal like a nice trip through nature or there's this other that we call cavalgata that you go in the horses like horseback riding but there is one of the horses with music and everyone is drinking, and it's a party, horseback riding. I, I'm not trying to uh, <laughs> say it's a great thing with animals, but yeah, it's a typical thing we used to 
Wow. No, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. That sounds even more fun. <laughs> I think, you know, because we're tourists and I told them that was my first time, you know, on a horse. It was a really intermediate trail. I really, you know, I, I was like galloping at one point and I thought to myself like, oh, I, I can do this. But then you, you just if you have never ridden a horse before and you don't know how to do it, it's kind of almost like painful, you know, like you get really sore. And if you got big boobies, it's just too much bouncing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah. I should have wore a, a sports bra. I was like, this is not, <laughs> you know, it's just too much. But it was a really good time. Go, if you go through in August, we have uh, it's called Feria Las Flores. And there's like, they close all the street and they show like uh, this kind of art made by flowers. And after all those flowers, like they pass with those arts, uh, everyone is like horseback riding through the city. So it's pretty fun. Oh, and you know what? On one of the tours, I uh, the horseback riding tour, I found out a lot of history about the city and um, the country and whatnot. And uh, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but the Sigiteros? Sid, Sid, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yes, yes, okay, yes. yeah. And so those guys used to be basically like the old school human Ubers, <laughs> you know, like yeah, they would literally. have like this big chair on their back and then people would like sit on the chair and they would just carry people around. I'm like, wow. Exactly. And, yeah. So yeah. I learned a little bit about where you came from and I really liked it. Exactly. And I I do want to go back eventually because, you know, half my time was spent getting poked in my spine and my arm and my knee and whatnot. But, um, you know, you know all that. That's, Next time we go together. Yeah. And I can show you a little bit deeper in the, in the coach. Yeah, because we actually, I wanted to play it safe. So we just stayed in the big mall, you know, El Tesoro. There's a huge mall there and it's really nice area. But we didn't go out into the actual city too much so mm -hmm. it would be nice to have a local show us and then okay so speaking of you being a local I found out one thing um, they said that there's like no racism there like people don't care you know if you're black white whatever doesn't matter but they said that there's something um, there's like a class system there where it's like you're in class one to six and they said and I was like what do you mean and they're like well you know, it's kind of like if somebody in class one wants to date somebody in class six, that's not going to happen. And I'm like, what? You know, like, is that true? <laughs> so, I mean, it really, it is kind of, it's just a little bit too dramatic that way. But going back to the racism, I I never felt um, this kind of racism, you know. I only felt that when I came here uh, by being like, or Latin American or just, because I speak Spanish, but when I when I lived there, you know, I grew up. Medellin is a city where you have black people, white people, um, you know, brownish. You have everything. Mm -hmm. you got because we're a mixture. You know, we yeah. are. Uh, there was a, the people, the local people, and then the Spanish people came in, and there was just a good mixture of it. So, no, I, there's not a lot of racism there in in that sense. Uh, definitely not. And about this the classes, yes, you can see that. It's more like money-wise where you see the division. Uh, but the dating part, not that much, to be honest, because uh, the bad guys uh, in, in Colombia are the ones that have like more women, right? And you see the lower um, class, like the more bad guy kind of style. So not necessarily uh, about that, no. Yeah, okay, okay. Maybe uh, my tour guide was being a little dramatic there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, speaking, since we're talking about Colombia and the culture, I wanted to ask you how um, sexuality is approached, um, maybe, you know, in your family, but also just in, you know, in your culture in general, because, you know, for example, I had on our teammate Tabitha Ricci, and she said that in Brazil, it's no big deal. She went home and she told her parents about, you know, the first time she lost her virginity, you know, just not a big deal. But if you tell someone here in America, oh, yeah, I lost my virginity. And then I went and I talked to my parents, people are like, oh, they like gasp, like, no, we would never do that. So I'm kind of wondering, like, where, um, you know, Colombia kind of falls in that scale. So I think it's hard to generalize, because I think it's family to family. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is different. And it depends on the class you are in. It, it really depends on a lot of stuff. Okay. So 
it's hard to generalize. I would say, yes, it is a little bit more open-minded culture in some sense. I personally had the experience of having a, a really open uh, relationship with my parents. You know, we talked about drugs, about sex, about absolutely everything since I was very young. You know, I used to, uh, my parents used to party and they didn't had like someone to take care of me. So I went to the party with them and I had to sleep in the chair while they were like drinking and, you know, <laughs> Um, I saw a lot of stuff, so um, I was pretty, you know, I don't know, open about it since I was very young. So it was, yeah, in my case, I think it was pretty open. I always had conversations with my parents about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. I, I have a lot of friends, which is totally the opposite. They had to hide until now and they cannot talk even about the sex. So it, it depends. You're right. You're right. You know, and it is hard to generalize an entire country, you know, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to know your personal experience. And actually, now that you mentioned your dad, I've seen him twice in the gym and he lives in Colombia. So you guys must have a good relationship, right? He's coming over, flying to see you. Um, oh, yeah. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love my dad. I love my dad. I mean, I have a good relationship with all my family, but my dad, uh, he... He gets along very well with me. You know, we're very similar personality, the personality and everything. So, yes, he goes, he comes here, he visits me. He likes to watch, you know, me fight. And um, whenever he has, like, a chance, he comes. My mom as well. So, Do you yeah. have brothers and sisters? I have one sister. She's older than me. Does she do? Only five years. Though. Five years? Does she do any sports? What's she like? Oh, no, we're completely different. <laughs> like, we don't even look alike. Really? We, we she doesn't like sports. She's a businesswoman. Uh she's like smaller, uh big boobs, uh super different. You know, Just even different. style like everything. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Super different. Okay, so, so let's talk about little- get along Okay, that's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about your fight career and I I know what's going on with you, but I kind of just want everyone to know, you know, so you're a UFC veteran, you are the former LFA champion, two-time LFA flyweight champion, super exciting. I always wanted to train with you because you were local, and I I remember actually before we started training at Black House, I contacted you through Instagram and was like, hey, you know, if you ever want to train, you're over at King's MMA, I believe, and uh, here we are, now we're teammates, and I just, you know, I got to tell everybody that... From day one, when I went into the gym at Black House, I've been coming uh, back from my injury. So I would kind of like, you know, be lingering on the mat and watching everyone do full training. You were always there early. You were always there later than everybody. And you were always just outworking people, even when you were injured. And so I'm super excited because I know right now it's an important time for you. Um, but let, let me hear it from you. What's got, what do you have going on yeah. fight-wise? So, um... Starting with, like, I my last fight was one year ago, okay, on March 12th um, in the UFC. Mm-hmm. So, I naturally, I had to take that year off just because of adapting. I was finding a good team for me. I'll go more, like, into details. But, um, yes, I was in the UFC. Right now, I'm, like, in my road back to the UFC. I'm going to fight, like, in the LFA again uh, for the belt. If I have to defend it, I will. And then my plan is to go back to the UFC. So that's why my goal is like fight wise. Uh, but yeah, I was going to fight in December for the belt. I got injured, uh, like you were mentioning. So I had to, you know, restructure everything again. Um, I I don't know. I'm very passionate about my sport and what I do. So for me, it's not hard to train. I mean, for sure, there's days that are hard and there's things that I don't like to. But I don't know. I, I feel like a wheel, like a fire on me. So it really doesn't let me sleep. It's like I'm, I wake up and I'm ready to go. I have to train and then I work, I rest. But everything is focused to fight. So, yeah, I don't know. It's like uh, it's already my lifestyle. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, I wish that, you know, five, six years ago, I had the type of focus and fire, like you said, um, that I do now, because now I'm older, I'm 35, and I feel the urgency, you know, so I wake up with that same fire, and like, there's no time left, and I look at you, and you're 
10 years younger than me and you have that same fire as if it's the end of your career, as if, you know, you're 35 or getting towards the end, you know? And so it's it's exciting to watch you train. Do you have an actual fight um, signed, inked? Yeah, so I do have a fight uh, for May 19. I just don't have an opponent yet. I mean, there's been issues with it, but I'm focusing that date. Uh, if it happens or not, whatever, but I'm doing everything and um, towards that fight. And for sure, I'll have an opponent soon, yes or no. Just to, you know, make adjustments in the game plan and strategy. But overall, I'm training, you know, because I, you know, Things can change last minute. You can change your opponent right away. So, yes, it matters that you have, like, someone in mind. But at the end of the day, if you are not putting the work and you're like, oh, no, I'm just going to get ready when they tell me who I'm going to fight. That, that doesn't work for me. Yep. You know, I, I really don't believe. I never believed in fight camps uh, in some sense, for sure. You need time frame to prepare your training and to, you know, uh, make all the math and all the things for weight cut. But I don't believe on like, oh, I'm going to start training for a fight. You know, I train. I train because that's what I do. And I like to fight. And I like to show my work. But I'm not going to just get ready for a fight. It sounds like you are, uh, you li live by the motto, stay ready. Wait, what, how's it go? Stay ready. You don't got to get I ready? Something, yeah, something, <laughs> something like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, how has your training been going? Obviously, you're at Black House. Um, what's it like training for you at Black House? And then do you train anywhere else? Yeah, so I like a lot to train at Black House. There's a really good group of girls. We, we train over there. Um, and I really like that because it's that competitive part. And I really see that improvement, you know. Um, training, for example, with... Uh, Let's say this week I was with Pieta and we were rolling and the same attack I did didn't work. So now my mind is like, motherfucker, now I have to adjust my game to make her tap. It didn't work. Now she's tapping me. Oh, what is going wrong? You know, what can I do to get better? So it's that like um, very, it's a, it's a nice, friendly uh, rivalry that yeah. we have. Yeah. Uh, but I need that, you know, I really need that because when I went only with guys, Mm -hmm. or there was two things or they go too soft we're like we're not evolving and it's okay mm -hmm. or we're like they were really putting the work and yes that was putting me out that was teaching me to be you know resistant and like uh be tough but i was not really working anything with it you know yeah it's really so, hard to you know, uh, execute your skills against a man, a professional male fighter who's not going too soft on you, you know, like you really have to, as a man with a female partner at the high level, you can't go full speed most of the time, you know, because it's just, you know, we're different. So yeah, I can, I personally understand that struggle as well. And uh, actually, Jacqueline Calvacante, is that how you say, say your last name? Cavalcanti in Portuguese. But way yeah, way better. Yeah, the way you said it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you and her, you know, these are like some women that are my size and like, you know, a decade younger than me. But as as like scary as it is for me, because I have, you know, a lot of weight on my shoulders coming back and the urgency and stuff like that. It's also so exciting because that's what we need, right? Women our size on the highest level that, you know, some days, you know, you guys are going to beat the fuck out of me and some days I'm going to get the better of you and at the end of the day we just appreciate that we're helping each other get better and we don't take it personal and I think that's actually something that women who if they're not professional you know mentally they do that you know they be it becomes exactly. an unhealthy rivalry and it's like no bro I'm your teammate I'm here to punch you but make you better <laughs> you know yeah, exactly I mean it, it's hard not to look at that way for me you know it's hard not to look at that way so that's why i feel so good where i'm at right now i have the right people uh you asked me for other gyms i do train my jiu-jitsu in another place in gracie baja northridge with victor silverio um but basically all the rest i do everything in in the black house i i have everything i live so close the gym thankfully because uh i'm there like almost 24 7 so, yeah. yeah i was just gonna say i thought you uh, right now you're like i live close and i thought you were gonna say i live in the gym and i was gonna say yeah i seen you you're always there you do live in the gym it's yeah. awesome <laughs> um, yeah 
So I know you got, you know, the LFA title fight, um, May, you said, right? Yeah, 19. Okay. And then, so besides fighting, you said, you know, you love it, there's a fire, but what else kind of excites you? You know, are you into other things? What are some other hobbies? And also kind of what do you want to use your platform for? You've been to the highest level in the UFC, you're gonna get back there. It's just a matter of time. What do you want to use your platform for? So I do have another passion that I'm trying to right now uh, work more towards it, and it's nutrition. Uh-huh. You know, when I first came here to the U.S., I went to college. I went to study nutrition. So I really like it. I never really worked with it just because of time, because I was, you know, I'm just gonna focus and fight, and and that's it. But it, I mean, um. In a time of my life where I learned that I can do multiple things at the same time, you know, um, so definitely nutrition is something that I really like, and I would like to uh, work with it in the future. Not, I'm not, I'm not sure with fighters, but with people, because um, I don't know. I feel fighters we're very complicated, and it's a different world. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. Be honest, but um, with people, yes, because. I don't know. I feel like I passed through a transformation when I lose weight, um, the way I want to look, and that makes me feel so powerful. And mm-hmm. I feel I should share that with other people. Mm-hmm. I want people to to feel that way, you know, to have at least, you know, the tools to to wake up like with a, you know, liking you, confidence, you know? so, confidence, yes, mm-hmm. confidence. And the past year around yeah the past nine ten months i started to do like uh lifting weights and uh, changing my nutrition and it completely changed my body it completely changed my mind and my training and my life you know so and i'm just starting again it's 10 months that i've been in this process and i already saw so much Mm -hmm. that i'm like excited to see how is it going to be like in the future and maybe you know maybe you should share this with others and they can transform themselves. I love that. And like you said, um, touching on what you said, like, I thought I couldn't do two things, but nutrition complements what you're doing right now with fighting. So the more you read and the more you learn and the more you spread the knowledge, you know, it's just like coaching other people, right? You may think you don't have time to teach other people, but when you teach others, it's just reinforcing, you know, the stuff that you know, and it's good for you. So that's perfect. I love that. And I love that you said, maybe not with fighters, because people always say, oh, you're a fighter. Uh, You want to open a gym later? I'm like, no, I don't want to open a gym later. (laughs) I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Like to saying, be honest, hey, you went to school. Do you want to be a teacher? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no. That's perfect. That's okay. that's, that's it. So, well, I, I don't think I want to. Do. Maybe you'll get into nu- nutrition and you know, like personal training as well. Yeah, I do that. Actually, I teach. Uh, again, I don't teach fighters. I teach people mm-hmm. uh, martial arts. I teach jujitsu, muay thai, or wrestling, or MMA. Um, so I can implement that actually in personal training with the nutrition. That's my idea. So you're a full-time fighter, personal trainer, and then you've got your own, you know, hobbies. Do you have time? I guess I should ask you, what is your current dating status? Are you seeing anyone? And uh, yeah, a lot of fighters come on the show and they say, oh, I'm just too busy to even see anyone. So what's your current dating status? So there's not actually a too busy. Because I always put this example. Imagine the people that are fighters that have kids. That is time consuming. Yeah. I don't have kids. I don't have dog. I don't have anything. So um, I actually, yeah, I mean, it's nothing. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing someone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm I can right. I can tell it's new by the way you said that. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, mm, but, I'm um, seeing someone. <laughs> but yeah, I'm seeing someone. Okay. So yeah, I think you, you, you have time for everything. It's just managing times for sure. Yeah. But yeah, you can do it. So what is your opinion? I love asking some of the uh, same questions on the podcast because they're just so relevant, like dating in the industry. A lot of people say, don't do it. And a lot of people say it's hard not to, you know, almost impossible when your day like you, you're 24 seven in the gym, pretty much. It's like, I don't have time to go to the bar to meet somebody or to the movies or whatnot. So what is your opinion on dating in the industry? Pros and cons? 
Oh, that's a that's a really hard one because I think I'm in the middle of both. I I already had an experience, you know, of dating someone I used to train with. And um yes, it's hard not to date someone because again, you're the whole time you're in a gym. Um I don't usually go to bars. Um I don't like dating apps. I basically or is in the street like random something happened yeah. or or in the gym, you know, in the industry. So it's hard not to but it's very hard. I think it really depends on who you're dealing with. Um, you, you cannot generalize for sure, but it, it it's complicated because you're, you're seeing the person almost all the time at home if you already live with the person mm -hmm. um, in the training session. And like sometimes it's hard when that person is giving you like commands. Let's say it's a someone you you're you're training. So the person is giving you commands all this time and then you go home and, you know, when, when is that going to change? You know, like try to separate uh, all the roles. Yeah. So it is it is very complicated. In my case, in my experience where I already passed, it was not a great idea. But I think I cannot generalize. I think, again, it's it's it depends on the person who you're with and how the how mature the person is. Yeah. What What are some uh, benefits, some pros, in your opinion, of dating someone in the industry, another fighter or, you know, a coach or, or someone? I think um, just the passion you got if you share the passion with that person. Yeah, it can be very beneficial because you can learn with it. You can, you know, uh, share your thoughts and like grow with it or ask, you know, techniques or whatever so i think that's actually really good because um you kind of put in that extra work uh by talking with that person so i think that's something good also the person is going to understand your sport you know that person already passed through fights so in that person must know if you feel i don't know too tired after trainings or you're exhausted or you're cutting weight so a, a lot of people don't understand that if you ask like if you're dating a doctor, maybe that person's like, What is this what is going on? You know, <laughs> yeah. all these emotions like with all these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's um actually a a good thing because they can understand and really mm, deal it with a different, you know, point of view. Yeah. There's so many weird and unique aspects to being a professional MMA fighter that it's exhausting sometimes having to explain to a new person, no, I'm not starving myself. No, I'm not cheating on you with the gym. Like, you know, it's just like all these weird little things that when you meet someone and they're into industry, that's definitely a pro in my, in my opinion. Like you said, it's just like, okay, you get it. It may not be easy for you to get, you know, some people don't like that we're, you know, giving all of our time to our sport, you know, cause it is a, a very selfish sport, but sure. it is what it is. So you're seeing someone, I won't pry on who that is, but I want to know, um, what's your type? Like, what do you like physicality wise? And then also, um, you know, what's sexy to you characteristic wise and personality? Okay. One of the things that, um, I'm going to talk about the outside later, but one of the things that attracts me the most, it's when someone, it's like very dedicated. You know, mm. when someone really gives it all. I don't like the lazy one. I don't like I don't like the the, the guy that is uh, you know, doing halfway things. No. I need the person that is in the top. Mm -hmm. So I think attitude for sure is something that uh it is a it, it is a it is the most important mm -hmm. thing of it. Yeah, I the agree. attitude and like I yeah. agree uh, 100%. You know, I always joke around. I'm like, okay, if you would ask me 10 years ago what I like in a partner, I'd be like, he has to be funny and good in bed. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And now I'm like, you know, my boyfriend of over three years, like the sexiest, the, the times that I think he is the most sexy is when he's either like sweating, like training hard, come home. And he, I, you could just tell he worked so hard or like just watching him like achieve his, his goals because you know firsthand you see them work hard. And it's just like that to me is sexy. You know, someone who's just like constantly working hard to improve themselves. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying for sure. So what about yeah. physical looks? 
the physical look um you know i like beard when they have beard you like a beard yeah beard? yeah dj's all like um, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> yeah i like that i like um i'm the bearded wonder <laughs> I don't know. I think I think there's it's not too physical, but there's just some uh, uh, some things like it has to be a clean person that changes everything. Like a good smile, that too. Like mm-hmm. clean teeth, mm-hmm. I cannot deal with, with that. No. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, You're tall. Do you like a tall li- guy? Yeah, but I already dated people like uh, a little bit smaller than me. Okay, it's not bad. I mean, it's not. It's not something that uh, I look that much. It's things or there's Okay. All right. Just wondering. And you mentioned before that you don't do online dating. Is that because you did it one time and had a horrible experience? Or you just don't like the idea of meeting meeting someone that you've never met in person? Okay. So I, I'll freak out, first of all. There's too many crazy people out there. Imagine... <laughs> I. Imagine the worst situations ever. I don't know if it's because I grew up in in Colombia and like you have to be aware of everything. You have to be aware of who's walking, if something bad is gonna happen. Uh, I don't trust a lot of things, you know. So it's just the idea of dating someone that I don't know, but just seeing a picture, it just freaks me out. That's good. Uh, You're probably very unlikely to get murdered. Good for you, Sabina. <laughs> 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 I think the worst things. Imagine something can happen. What can I do? Like, yes, I fight, but whatever. If they have a gun yeah. or not, I don't know. I don't know. I so I freak out. I don't like it, and it just. I don't know. I like a lot. I'm kind of that old school in that sense. Mm-hmm. I like the, I like the meeting the person. I like the conversations. I like to look. You know, I like that kind of style. So, um, I don't know. I don't think. Uh, sorry, that's okay. Oh, um, I was like, who's I don't that? Think, uh, <laughs> I don't think I like uh, that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, online dating is not for everyone. Then you get people who get catfish you and, and you know, they, their pictures are t- 10 years old. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a scary thing for sure. So I don't blame you. You mentioned um, since you're from Colombia and it got me thinking, at what age did you come over here? I came when I was 18 years old. Okay. So, yeah, so your whole life, you know, b- before you became an adult or whatever, yeah, so I can see how it would be a culture shock for you. How long did it take you to adjust to the difference from Colombia to the U.S.? Well, I'm still adapting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no. It was, it was actually very smooth. I don't know. I, I had so many goals in my mind that it didn't uh, felt hard. I didn't feel it was like something super hard to adapt or like being away with my family or something. I do, I did start in my life like going out and stuff very young. So I also, it, it was not a shock. I felt like I lived a lot of stuff when I was there, you know. Uh, I started drinking and partying and all that phase of life very young. So whenever I was 16, I was like, okay, now I'm going to focus to train now. Wow. Um, okay. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it's just different culturally. Nowadays, I don't think that much. I see young kids here drinking like with 14 years old. Oh, so, yeah, no, it's yeah. that's common for sure. So why did you clean up so, so early at a young age? That's amazing. Most people, you know, they party into their, you know, mid-20s and then they get close to 30, like myself, and they are like, oh, shit, time to get it together. <laughs> um, I found the sport. And um, I didn't want to party anymore. Like I wanted to wake up early to train, and if I was drinking, I was not gonna, you know, do a good training session. So it was that passion of training that made me kind of stop, um, you know, partying and drinking and going out late. Um, but again, I did it for for enough time, which I. At the end of it, I, w- I didn't really enjoy it anymore. It didn't really make sense. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's the biggest difference uh, from Colombian boys to American boys? Do you notice like a, a big difference or the same, same guys are guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? No, okay, no, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, well, I never, I never dated actually like 
an American, to be honest with you. Oh, I okay. mean, no, I never. But just by the approach is super different. Like, I feel um, here guys are a little bit more shy. Hmm. Also, I'm a pretty big girl and I can be intimidating. I understand. But um, guys are very shy in Colombia. Like, they right away, they're going to, you know, uh, we say piropo in, in Spanish. They're going to give you like a, something. They're going to say, oh, how are you pretty? Or what, you know, they're going to do this approach mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit more uh, aggressive, let's say, than here. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think that is very different. From, Do you prefer that approach? Would you prefer the male to be aggressive so that you, you know, don't have to do so much work? Um, I mean, not too aggressive, but yes, it does. I feel like if you like someone, you should be able to approach mm -hmm. and, and, you know, get my attention. But here, and I don't know. I, yeah, I think I, I think I just prefer if the person is straightforward to it you know not not in the mean like straightforward in the mean like i don't know saying something or trying to have a, com uh, a conversation yeah and i it, you're right it's just it's very different in different countries and i've talked to a lot of different people and um actually my boyfriend i think he was the one that told me when he went to brazil he noticed that the men the men there like in the club they were like so aggressive they would just go like grab a girl by their arm and like grab her to dance and the girls okay that's too much well, yeah that's too much and then actually it was it was funny because he said that later he was talking to one of the brazilian girls And uh, she basically was like, yeah, like American guys, like, why don't you guys like if you like a girl, just like go grab her. Like the girls were so used to it over there. And I was like, yeah, different cultures. <laughs> yeah, very different. No, no, not to that level, not to that level. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know, maybe just uh, or the ones that I met here, they're very shy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you're just a badass woman and they're like, Ooh, what if she... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what's um, it been like, you know, in your words, dating as a female combat sports athlete and, you know, and then one that's been on the highest level? Do you feel like you said, like, are men intimidated by you? Oh, yeah, I do feel that. Yeah, I feel they're intimidated. Um, I'm not going to say all of them, but there's definitely uh, this and especially when you say the profession, like. The, I am already big and everything in there. And whenever I say I'm a MMA fighter, for sure, there you can see it in their eyes. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Has being an MMA fighter ever um, caused trouble in your relationships? Uh, not really. Not really. I mean, I feel like every with everyone I've been, they already know who I am. Uh, what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So, not really, no. No? Okay, that's good. I love asking this question because, you know, a lot can change in five years, ten years, and so, you know, I know you're only in your mid-20s, but what, do you, what did you used to put up with in the dating game that you will no longer put up with today, you know? Like, what have you learned in your love, romance, you know, and sexual experiences that, you know, maybe we used to put up with but no longer will? Um, so I will not put up with, I made a lot of mistakes. I did the same mistake a couple of times, actually. And I always forget how to say this word in English. It's the opposite of feminism. How do you say that? Masculinity? Masculinity? Mm -hmm. Like, like being like kind of too like... No, rough. not feminist. Not feminist. Sorry. Um, no, yeah. Like when the person, because in Colombia, you see that more in South America, right? Machismo. When the when the when the guy like um, thinks he has the control of everything and like the women is just for or have kids or you know they they denigrate the women yeah they put it like in a lower level yeah that kind of attitude I cannot pick I I cannot do that anymore you know okay. I yeah I did that in small actions for sure I'm I'm just a trying to explain the word that I don't even know how to say it in English. No. In I, Spanish is machismo. Yeah, that's what Zol right? said. <laughs> machismo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and exactly. Yeah, it doesn't matter what culture. There's machismo. Um, yes, everywhere. It, yeah, everywhere. everywhere. For sure. Okay, and so you're saying that you're 
problem in the past was that you tend to p pick partners that had that personality. Because yeah. you usually the person that is this way, they look uh, tough. You know, they look uh, they can protect you in some way. But it, I mean, usually is just insecurity, and that's why they are um, that way. That's why they kind of have to put with this attitude to put you down so they can feel up so i would not that's definitely something that um for my future i don't i don't want to choose a partner that has this kind of attitude and you can you can see it from far away mm -hmm. you know i feel like you, I, in the past i was just too blind and like no maybe this is nothing i would just let it pass and yeah. let it pass but yeah. it's what so. what are yeah I, I we call those red flags right <laughs> Yeah. What yeah. are some red flags um, that you can see in a male and kind of raises awareness that this guy, this guy might not be the right one? Like what what has, you know, kind of shown you in the past? Like, oh, I don't. OK, I'm not going to get with this guy because he reminds me too much of an ex-boyfriend or something. Um, OK, uh, for example, if you're having a discussion, right? And the person starts to, uh, for sure, lo uh, raise their voice, you know, and trying mm. to have the control in aggressive uh, matter, even if it's just a scream, you know, I feel that it's a, definitely a red flag. Yep. Um, or <clears throat> also, like trying to avoid conversations. I think that's a, that's a must, you know, like like that's a red flag. Yeah. If they try to avoid a conversation or like try to um stop to talk to you for for days if you're dating already someone and that's a red flag for sure oh so, you, yeah like i don't if, know things like that if they like ghost you or ignore you for a while yes yes yeah that's just immaturity yeah. and trying to play in some kind of mind game you know and yeah. and it's funny you say that about <laughs> um the machismo and then that kind of covering something up because yeah in my past experiences as well some of the toughest men i've met have been the biggest babies too like you get exactly you know, out in the world they're so fucking tough and then behind closed doors they're like ooh, ooh, and i'm like <laughs> what's what yeah. is this facade yeah. that you're putting on you know why can't we find a happy medium here <laughs> you know yeah. that's awesome yeah. um so, uh, have you dealt with the regular uh, creepers in your DMs? I love asking this because fighter girls, we get some weird ones. Have you gotten any crazy DMs lately? Yeah, I mean, always the feed pictures. There's that's a super common <laughs> one. Um, but I don't know. I feel like the people that follow me, they're super respectful. To be honest, I mean, rather than that and dick pictures and whatever. People are very respectful, you know, of, of my work and even in the comments. There's not a lot of hate, which I appreciate for sure because, you know, it's a, it's a good environment to be in. Like the post, if you see the comments, there's not a lot of hate. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know why. Um, I did notice so that. <laughs> I did notice that actually, you know, because I'll always do about a week of posting for my next guest to kind of get fan questions and whatnot and some people's fans are ruthless and then other people's yeah. fans like yours very respectful but but also like very kind of they seem very die hard you know and a lot of obviously um you know colombian based fans i'm like i don't know what this says but they seem i think i think it's positive mm -hmm. there's a lot of hearts in here so i'm like this is good <laughs> but um yeah that that's good i'm glad you don't get too much hate no no, I mean, but you're also not one of those fighters that's like doing crazy stuff and bringing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's too. <laughs> yeah, that too. I feel like it's yeah, it's what I I show as well, like in social media. I'm not too. Um, I just show my work, you know. Maybe I should share a little bit more about my life and everything, but yeah, it's just a um, matter of time, to be honest with you, because I don't mind sharing my life. It's just um, it's, it's a little bit tough to manage everything that i want to do like in dude, one single day dude it is crazy i have to make a list and it's like okay like training this like my my nutrition and then i'm like instagram post like i have to put it in like write it down and make it a priority because as you know we are marketing ourselves and the yeah. most important thing is always the training and the fight but 
the UFC and the way that our sport has evolved, it's like social media is so fucking powerful. So you have to make it a priority, you know, like obviously not number one, but you know, if you don't make it a priority, then you miss out on sponsorships, podcasts, you know, the UFC, you don't got enough followers, you know, and your career career is, to be honest, uh, when I, when I uh, left uh, the UFC, I really wanted to focus on the social media in some sense, because I know that's a tool that's going to help me to go back. You know, I have a fan base, Latin American is very strong in mm-hmm. my social media. And I know that's a really good thing. You know, people really follow me and want to know about my career. So, uh, and I appreciate that so much that I really want to invest in and keep people up with what I'm doing, uh, the way I think as well. So, yeah. So, and okay, so that's perfect. I'm glad we're transitioning into this because you want to you know, show people, you know, let people in a little bit more, but obviously it's time consuming because your priorities are on point, you know, and that's good. Uh, But you were also, you've done modeling in the past. And so I thought you would have like one of these um, OnlyFans or a fan time, like an exclusive content site, not saying, you know, showing your boobies or anything like that. But what you can do on those sites is, you know, personal video video uh personal like uh diary videos you know you can talk to the fans interact with them and then you can also be making money i feel like i work for one of these companies because every time a guest especially a female guest comes on Mm -hmm. and they don't have one i'm like you're missing out on money (laughs) but so what my question is what is your thought on only fans or fan time or these exclusive content sites and would you ever get one I think uh, it, it is for sure a good tool, you know, um, anyone can do whatever they want to, if they want to do like any content, if it's uh, sex, if it's not sex, if it's training, whatever. I just feel like to do it, if I ever do it, I have to do it very good, you know, I don't want to uh, just occasionally put like some videos there, you know, because because no, I don't like to do things halfway. So <laughs> yeah, I, I like don't that. Really have one. Yeah, I don't. I really have. To, I don't have that much time. I'm with an idea um, that hopefully soon is, I'm gonna have it. But I'm gonna have like a podcast. Yay. So I'm already. I am already too busy to do all these things and then another thing. You know. So um, not right now. I don't think it's something I will do um, in the near future. But I'm not close to the to to you know use in the yeah the oh so, okay so you're saying that you might do a podcast but not in the near future no the the like this website oh, thing you were talking about but the podcast yes the podcast very soon i mean in the next couple of months i think uh I'll have at least the first episodes ready. This is, so. Okay, yay. Yeah. This is the perfect time to tell your fans that are listening, what is the podcast going to be about? Do you have a name yet? Like, plug it right here because then my fans will listen to your podcast. <laughs> Yes, so I cannot release absolutely anything about it because Damn. I'm trying to 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 get uh, the right people to buy the idea. Actually, oh, okay, okay. So um, not not yet, but I I think it's uh it's very exciting. It's gonna be for sure with not only MMA, but the focus is gonna be MMA fighters uh, in it. But um, I think um, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a different way to. Um, talk about life and in you know in this kind of podcast and interview let's say uh so yeah hopefully see it soon i can release all that okay. information okay. but it's really good <laughs> well maybe i'll have you back on after you uh you know have your podcast up and going so this yeah. is kind of a hard question philosophical uh what is your definition of love okay i i that's a really hard one it is right you know? <laughs> That's a really hard one, but um, every time I think of or the people or my sport, I feel that love, you know. So I think it's uh, love for me. It's that fuel to do things, you know. I usually I'm not uh, too fake. You can see it or in my face, or I will say it to you. I don't do <sighs> stuff because I do it. You know, I really have to have that love to do it uh so i feel love it's that fire that um you know keeps you moving in life because if not you would just you know be like kind of sleeping and surviving you know you'll be surviving you're not be living actually 
Yeah. So yeah, I feel I feel love whenever I do my sport, whenever I fight, whenever I train, uh, whenever I'm with people that you know make me feel that way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like that. Okay, I like that. I like that you uh, added you used uh, your sport in MMA to talk about love. I'm like, wow, you love this fucking sport. I thought, you know, like, when you <laughs> oh, care yeah. about I, somebody. I <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that too, but no, no, the sport is the one that gives me the most. And actually, for the past two years and a half, well, no, like, yeah, the, the, the last two years, I kind of lost that for the sport. You know, I was, I was not in a really good time of my life i had like a really um let's say um toxic i don't like that word but whatever toxic relationship Mm -hmm. so i i felt like i lost that power to fight you know and that will i didn't i fought because yes i wanted to for sure i signed the contract not no one signed it for me yeah but i didn't felt the same thing as i feel right now or as i used to feel before oh. um because i i was you know my my entire life outside the sport was messed up yeah so it was taking up my energy to really focus in the sport yeah so uh, yeah i think um that's why i put that example with the love with the sport because that's what I feel the most when I do it right, right now and I know that's love because I stopped feeling it for a little bit yeah um but yeah I'm yeah back. I'm so happy you brought that up because <clears throat> I don't know if men are the same way and I don't want to you know generalize but obviously you know females we are the more emotional due to our hormones right you know like sorry guys it's just science you know you got to put up with us we're more emotional but i was wondering like do you think that men are just as affected by their relationships um and their their ability to train like if a man has a poor relationship with a partner male or female and then he goes on the mat in my opinion and my experience they just get to it they can just fucking you know, they leave it off the mat, they go, they train. You don't really see it affect them. Women, on the other hand, myself included, and I, you know, I would like to master this someday, but I'm just a very passionate person. When I'm not okay with my partner and I have to be on the mat, it is so fucking hard to focus and to get the same output, you know, to get the same experience on the mat uh, compared to, like you said, if I was just happy, you know, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, one affects the other. Your fight uh, affects your life, and your life will affect your fight. Uh, I think it doesn't matter really if you're, you know, a guy or, or a woman. I think for training, for sure, it's very personal. Like each one is going to be different. Women, in my case, and the people I see, um, it does get affected a little bit more. You can see it a little bit more clear yeah. uh that when a man it's you know passing through something or when my um ex-boyfriend we fought whatever he could just go and train and <laughs> i was you know messed up i could train but my mind was not there so mm-hmm. i was not really trained yeah uh so yeah i mean it's it is kind of hard and i think that's uh, that's where kind of maturity comes not because of how you're going to deal it in the mat but how you live your life with your partner mm-hmm. because at the end of the day if you can just solve things and live uh, for sure, there's going to be fights and everything. But if you can live your life in a peaceful way, that's, that's the solution. Why you do have to, you know, focus on how I'm going to deal with my emotions in the mat. No, the fucking emotions are not the problem. Problem is that we're fighting all the time, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. I think, um, I think it's more from there, but I, yeah, I think it, it affects everyone. Yeah. Do you think that it's beneficial to stay single while you're actively competing? Um, not that we I want to, not it. that we want to, right? Because you can't control how you feel. You meet someone and, you know, let's say you're in like a single status, you know, you just can't, it's magical. And, you know, like the attraction, you can't fight it. If you're going to fall for someone, you're going to fall. But let's say yeah. that we were robots. Like part of me sometimes thinks like, I just wish I could just turn off the part of my brain that feels love and passion so I can focus on my sport, <laughs> you know? You know, I think um, 
not I think I had the both experiences you know when I when I moved here to um, California I was very young but I had a boyfriend which I trained with him in Colombia uh, and we were together in long distance but we were together and I did very good in my career being with him not being single um, and the times I was single I did really good too you know so it, I think it depends on how you are with uh, how that matches with the person. Yeah. You know, if it's, uh, it's if it's a relationship that it's growing you up. And not only partner. We're talking here partner, but also your coach. You know, it depends on how you have your relationship with your coach mm -hmm. or with your training partner or with your family. You know, I am a person that uh, I'm super close to my family. I would not have, like, a mind if I'm fighting with my family mm. uh, to go to train. So... Um, I think you really have to watch out with the people that you are with, you know, let's say like the, the five people you are always with. You have to be careful because you're going to start um, kind of adapting to them and you're going to start getting things from them. So you have to be careful uh, who you who you with the whole time. That makes a lot of sense. And that's interesting that you say <clears throat> you're close with your family. So if you were fighting with your family, you wouldn't have that same ability to train. Uh, for me, I think, you know, a little light bulb just went off in my head. I'm like, I'm not close with my family. And I know that's a reason why when I have a partner, he becomes like my family. And so that's yeah. why I get so affected. I'm like, you're everything to me, which is probably not healthy. But you know, it's like, so um, I'm happy that you have and you know, a lot of people do have that ability to separate it, separate it and like leave it off the mat, right? Sometimes it's just so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. And uh, I feel like my family, they have been like that support since the beginning. So I can imagine, you know, being like without them. Yeah. You know, those are the people like I, I really reach out when I'm good, when I'm bad, when I'm every single day. There's no day I don't talk to my mom or my dad. Oh, really? No wow. Day. Yeah, that's Every a close relationship. Day. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, so... Sorry. <laughs> you are a alpha female, and I love asking this question because most fighters that I have on here, we're a little crazy, you know? We're just very extreme people. Um, so I like asking, what's the most romantic, if you're kind of like a, a romantic, or what's the craziest thing you've ever done? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Is, what happened? We, I spilt my drink and i didn't even notice and dj zol is cleaning up right now <laughs> oh no oh god okay uh let's continue this interview <laughs> sorry yeah, it's all good um so what is the what was the question the most romantic um, yeah what's the what? okay. you know some people they aren't very romantic they don't like do grand gestures so if you're not romantic then maybe what's the craziest thing you've ever done for love no i'm pretty romantic okay you know I have my faces. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I cannot label myself because it depends on what I'm feeling the time of the month. It really depends on a lot of stuff, but I'm pretty romantic. You know, I, I always like to, um, let the person know that I'm thinking of, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of them. Mm -hmm. So I leave a note or I buy like a, I don't know, the, let's say the bubble gum that that person likes yeah. and I know which one it is and I get it. I know the type of coffee the person drinks, so I, you know, I get that. Mm -hmm. uh, or just, you know, a uh, um, nice message. So I, I try to do this. For me, that's romantic. I don't know if that's romantic No, for no, that's, I mean, or, a lot of people say it's the little things that count, and that's exactly what that yeah. is. And as you're saying that, I'm like, yeah, my boyfriend is romantic, I guess, because he's he does that. I have, like, my favorite gum, Hubba Bubba, and you can't find it very many places. That's so hard to find. It's, it's best gum but yeah and he'll he'll if he sees it in the gas station he'll grab it for me and be like i got your gum i'm like thank you <laughs> that's awesome that's, that's that for me it means a lot because it's not like whatever they're gonna buy you whatever gum you know no they they're thinking of you yeah so i like to do this kind of things and the uh, crazy thing i did for love and i almost gave up for my entire career for someone so Ooh. And that was the greatest thing I've done in my life. I will never do that again. Was that for the toxic relationship guy? Yeah. Oh, man. 
Okay, she's okay. It just puts it puts the <laughs> picture. This program now. Oh my god! <laughs> it just makes it uh, the, a bit gives us a better picture of what that was like, you know, like uh, for to be in that type of relationship and also willing to give up the thing that you're so passionate about. You know, sounds like you have never found someone that you love as much as MMA. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I mean, not that I love that you don't haven't found, but I, I love that you are so passionate no, no. about your yeah. sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so sex and violence, the sex part here. Do you abstain from sex before the fight? You've heard that myth that, you know, for men, it makes their legs weak or whatever. And sometimes they say for females that it actually benefits us. What's your preference? Uh I'm I'm a very everyone says that I'm a very hard person to read because it I feel like I don't have a rule. It really depends on the camp. It really depends on my attitude in in the fight week. Let's say uh, for sure not in the fight day because I want to kill someone. You know <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, I'm all sometimes I'm nervous so I don't want to even talk or sometimes I'm super relaxed but I'm like focused so. Um, I don't have a rule with it. I've done it in fight week. Um, there's a, but but I can definitely say that it is harder as the weeks go closer to the fight because um, I am cutting weight. Yep. I'm super tired of all the trainings, and the, I think sometimes the last thing I'm gonna think about is sex. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. but there's other times where. Is the opposite. Like I'm cutting weight and everything, but I have energy and I'm going for it for the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. So it depends. I don't know. It depends a lot in 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 the day. I don't know. Yeah, I it, it and I also think it depends. I haven't really talked about this on the podcast. You know, I just always, I always ask this question, but I just realized it also depends on where you're at in the relationship with your partner. You know, if you are fighting with your partner and, you know, or they don't understand that you're grumpy because you're hungry and sore, you know, and so you're bickering. I'm like, the last thing I want to do is have sex with you when we're fighting. So, yeah. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, have you ever been asked to do something too weird or freaky in bed that you remember and you're like, oh, my God, no way. <laughs> uh not I, I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I've been, I'm only 25 years old and I don't know, I, I had like very long relationships. So, so the people, they're, I don't know, not too crazy, not really. So that is that, you know, no. kind of like your style? Are you a monogamous person, like long-term relationships? That's the pattern, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. and it's not, it's not like with intention because... Uh, whenever I'm single, I'm like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what options I have. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I don't, I can't, I, for some reason, I don't, um, especially after my last relationship, I was, I, I'm not gonna, um, you know, get anything. No, I have some standards and I cannot get, I'm not gonna get, uh, comfortable with anything, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, to get the right person, usually I fell in love. So then I start a relationship, you know, because yeah. I'm too peaky. And then now I want to be with the person. So, yeah. It's what did I say? I said it's like magic. It's like you, you're like, oh, I'm going to stay yeah. single. And then when you meet someone and there's chemistry, it's, there's nothing you can do about it. But it's also beautiful, right? Because you think, you know, especially after, a, you know, a hard relationship, you say to yourself, like, no, like, it's going to be a minute before I date someone. And then you find yourself in a relationship, right? <laughs> it's like, why? Again? <laughs> What's yeah. the longest that you stayed single if you are constantly in relationships? Um, the, like, over a year and a half. No, like, yeah, like a, like a year, let's say. A yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually yeah. kind of like that as well. I have I usually I'm not single for very long. I, I don't know something inside of us. I think, you know, we crave that connection and that long term bond. And also, I feel like um, as an athlete, as an MMA fighter, you don't want to I don't think it's beneficial if you're with a lot of people and you're like dating a lot of people just because of your time. Or for me, it's impossible. You um, I wake up at 6 a.m. I have to do all my stuff and I get back home 
uh, and I'm sleeping like 10, 30, 11 p.m. So I'm the whole day doing stuff. Um, if I'm going to take time to date here and there and this and that, it's going to take a little bit of the focus out of, um, you know, what mm -hmm. I'm doing. So yeah. I feel that's why that happens, that I, I, I'm, uh, I have someone for long term because it's mm -hmm. more you know uh, it fits more to my lifestyle yeah that's it. yeah i was gonna say convenient but that's not the right word beneficial for sure yeah. beneficial, beneficial. Yeah. yeah okay what is your biggest pet peeve in the bedroom um you know some people don't like bad breath we talked about you like you know clean teeth i am the same way if you have bad breath I, I, i'll tell my boyfriend like i want to make out with you so bad can you brush your teeth and he'll be like Okay, and then I'll just go brush his teeth. <laughs> no, I mean, because like yeah. most men, you know, they if you tell them to, they will. But yeah, like that's a that's definitely one of my pet peeves. What's and it could be anything, you know, sexually. Um, our funniest one is a guy slipping in the back door without asking. Not fun. Not cool, man. <laughs> well, um, no, they've been pretty respectful in that sense. But for sure, uh, the teeth, the bad. I, I I have to wash my teeth. Every time I eat, I'm like that. So, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Right, yeah, I, I, I'm on another level, but uh, <laughs> so definitely, definitely um, having a healthy mouth. <laughs> um, what else? Um, oh, for sure. After training, if I'm dating someone, um, take a shower. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to <laughs> until you take a shower because it's not only your sweat, unless you were, you know, we, we were lifting weights and and whatever it's your sweat i love it i love it yeah but come on you roll with this guys that i don't even know if they take shower or not no 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 you're not gonna touch me so <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty bad with that yeah. yeah i i don't think i you know like god i'm trying to think you know uh, but I, I really don't think i've ever had sex with a partner after jujitsu because that's nasty but i i want to say yes i definitely have like hit pads or lifted weights, you know, just sweaty or, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. But, but what is not fine is that you're rolling and you're, you no. know, you're just disparring. You just disparring. Come on. No, no, no. Don't Dude, touch me. I don't no. want ringworm no. on my vagina. Get out of here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other day, no. uh, my boyfriend and I were in the uh, sauna and it was like packed, right? Like a 24 hour fitness. And, you know, there's like people sitting on the, the bottom one, people sitting on the top one. And he was sitting on uh, the bottom and I was sitting behind him and I didn't realize it. But like my sweat was like dripping on him. And then like later we walked out, you know, we're talking in the car and I and he said something about, yeah, your sweat was dripping on me. I was like, oh, sorry. He goes, no, I loved it. And I'm like, oh, you're gross. <laughs> but it's, you know, some people. That's like a, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's good. It's fine. That's good. That's good. But well, uh, not a lot of people sweat there. Yeah, no, that's nasty. Uh, so in the bedroom, is that a place where you actually can be, you know, not so much of like a dominant female? Uh, do you prefer to be dominant or submissive in the bedroom? Uh, both. Both, yeah. I mean, again, I'm like, it, it, it depends on how I feel in the day. And I think it should be like, or I like to be like that because there's some days that I have a little bit more, um, you know, that wanting to Drive. do it, you know. Yeah. There's other times that I want to be more passive. So it really depends, again, and, and whatever. But uh, I do feel there's always someone a little bit more passive or aggressive. And it, let's say I've been, yeah, I think I've been a little bit more passive, let's say. Yeah. And it sounds like that would make sense because it sounds like you – traditionally historically chose the machismo guys and those guys yes. tend to be even though they're motherfuckers they're good fuckers you know what i mean <laughs> like they're good in bed yeah. you know i'm like yeah you son of a bitch if you were so good yes. in bed <laughs> uh, yeah maybe stuck around a little bit longer uh, because of that but you know what moving on to the lightning sex round here we go <laughs> <laughs> Sabina. Oh. Uh, so for those of you watching who have never seen the lightning sex round, it's just a rapid fire yes or no segment. But Sabina, I want to tell you that I've gotten in trouble from the listeners. Um, if you want to elaborate on one of these, feel free. If you don't, no worries. Okay. 
Okay. All right, here we go. Lightning sex round with Sabina. Do you dirty talk in bed? Yes. Spank or like to be spanked? Like to be spanked. Biting? So so. Not not too much. No. A little bit. Uh, choking. Little. 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 Uh, threesomes. Uh, not a fan. No. Yeah. Uh, do you watch porn? Yeah. Uh, any fetishes like a foot fetish? No. Bodily fluid fetish. I don't know what is that. So, like, bodily fluid could be anything from saliva, cum, semen. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, not, not really. No. Okay. Uh, bondage, which could be like ropes or blindfolds or handcuffs. Uh I like to try it. I'm not. I'm. I'm interested, but I don't know. Yeah. Don't o- know. Open to it. Open to it. Uh, yeah. Role playing. No. Yeah. It's silly. Uh, butt stuff on you or a partner? Uh, not a fan. Do you ever use sex toys? Yes. Ever been to a swingers party or a sex club? Never. Uh, are you a lingerie lover? Yes. Body hair, yay or nay? No. No. No hair. And have you ever been caught having sex uh, or caught masturbating? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's always so embarrassing. Dang it. It's the worst. It's the worst. But yes. (laughs) Okay. Well, that was the lightning sex round. (laughs) Congratulations. Okay. So we always end the episode by playing a game of Fuck, Mary Kill and some fan questions. (laughs) Fuck one, marry one, kill one. Go. I think we're done here. Done here. Now, with the fuck, Mary kill, we always say we don't really want to kill anybody. You know, it's just a game, guys. Relax. But, Sabina, I'm actually going to give you an option. Now, I have two friends that help me out with these, and they give me, you know, different categories or additions, right? So you can either pick between uh, Colombian fighters or, and now I actually chose the Colombian fighters because the first one they gave me were uh, actors who played drug lords because they thought Colombia, Pablo Escobar. And when I was in Medellin, one of the things that I learned was that people in Colombia do not like being associated with Pablo Escobar because there's so much more, you know? And so I'm like, oh, okay, Sabita, do you want to do actors uh, who play drug dealers or Colombian fighters? Well, I'll go with the actors. I don't like to be... I mean, you cannot deny your past. Whatever, Pablo Escobar was there, but there's so many good things nowadays, but I don't care. Let's go with it. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Um, Actually, because besides you, there is not a lot of legitimate... There's not a lot. Say, who are you going to say? Like, no, there's not a lot. Well, the guys that I found... I had to dig deep. It was like, you know, I won't say their names, but like this guy, uh, he lived in Colombia for two years. I'm like, <laughs> but, he, <laughs> but he has like the flag, the Colombian flag. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or one know, guy, know. you know, he lived in Colombia like from age like 10 to 14. I'm like, why do you have that flag? <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever. But I was like, you're like the legit Colombian queen, you know, like you are yeah. Colombia. So yeah. all right, here we go. Yeah. Actors who played drug dealers. Um, oh, you might have to use your phone or something to Google this, but um, Johnny Depp, obviously, we know. Can you see me there? Yeah, I can see you. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So first off, we have Johnny Depp from Blow. And you obviously know Johnny Depp, but you may need to. For sure. that's, that's my favorite. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. And then uh, Benicio Del Toro from Traffic. You don't know what Benicio Del Toro looks like? Oh, so Okay, much- I know who. So much no, cuter. I, I think he's cuter than Johnny Depp. But and then finally, Al Pacino from Scarface. Ooh. <laughs> so it's fuck, kill, and marry. Mm-hmm. I'll marry Al Pacino. Okay. I'm gonna kill uh, Del Toro, and I'm gonna fuck Johnny Depp because Johnny Depp is the best. I don't know. He seems like he may be a machismo guy. I think you're picking traditionally. Yes, but- <laughs> 
not gonna, that's why I'm not gonna marry him. What's wrong no with you, man? You we just said <laughs> it's in your blood. You're just like, oh, he seems real toxic. Ooh, give him to me. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, okay, that was fun. <laughs> so right now we're gonna switch over to the UFC Fight Pass platform. But for all those people who are messing up and not, you know, subscribe to the UFC Fight Pass platform, please tell them where they can find you on all your social media, when your next fight date is, how they can watch that, and anything else you want to share right now. Okay, so social media, Sabina Maso, um, everywhere, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. My next fight is May 19. It's going to be through UFC Fight Pass, and probably it's going to be for the UFC, uh, for the LFA belt in yeah. 125 pounds. I love it. And <clears throat> I'll put all those links to her social media like I do every episode, guys. So if you're driving and you want to, you know, stop and pull over, don't worry. You can always check later. That is it for episode 133 with Sabina, Colombian queen, Mazo. I love getting to know people every single week. Even someone like my teammate, I, you know, I, I didn't know that about her. It's fun getting to do the research and then elaborating on topics that you just don't talk about in the gym, right? <laughs> so, um, guys, I gotta say it. UFC Fight Pass is the world's premier combat sports streaming service with over 200 live events, the largest fight library in existence, original shows, and more. Sign up for one year and get half off for a limited time at ufcfightpass.com backslash sign up. Now, next week, we have an awesome guest. We have Mike Moore, aka Mindset Mike. If you check him out on Instagram, it's at mindset underscore Mike. He is a mental coach. Now, we always have combat sports athletes, but as you know, in the intro, we say other experts in their fields. And this guy, he's in MMA, he's in wrestling, and he is an expert in his field. I'm really excited to have him on. He's actually a former FBI and certified crisis negotiator, so that makes his story a little more interesting. Uh, yeah, he works with UFC champions, um, different athletes, and you know, whole teams. Um, and he also has a website that you can go to called wrestlingmindset.com, created by wrestlers for wrestlers. It's very beneficial. I've checked it out. And as I get back into the octagon and I'm in new fight camp after two years, um, I'm so excited to really tap into the mental side of things as well, because I think that's going to be, you know, the winning factor for myself. So I'm excited to talk to him, get some tips and some tricks and whatnot. And then also, guys, I always got to tell you, please don't forget to check out our website. We have merchandise. We have all of our uh, back catalog of program uh, episodes on there. So if you ever want to hear anybody, sometimes you guys will request a guest that we've actually already had on. I should probably make a post because, guys, we're at episode 133. We had UFC fighters. We had Bellator, PFL. We've had it all. Males, females, coaches, cut man we've we've actually no we have yet to have a cut man but we have one coming up and i won't say who um so check that out guys and then if you want to email us that's sex violence sex and violence podcast at gmail.com if you want to give us a guest suggestion or sponsor the show you can always email us there and one thing i forgot to mention in the intro please support my exclusive content site. It's like OnlyFans, but better. It's called Fan Time, and that's ashleyrebelgirl.com. That's where all the naughty pictures and videos are. Um, and yeah, all that just goes to putting uh, more money into the studio and supporting my fight career and whatnot. So thank you so much, guys, for that. And um, yeah, I always tell you guys every week, I love you so much for the fan questions. They really make the show so much better. Those are on the UFC Fight Pass platform. You can go over to their um, platform and check that out. And just want to say thank you to DJ Zoll for always coming in clutch. Sorry about spilling that grande matcha on the ground. <laughs> I spilled I'm so sorry. I'm going to clean it up. I don't think much of it. <laughs> 
So you can check him out on Instagram at DJ Zoll. And Tomorrow Kids Studio, we got the new studio. I hope you guys like the new background. Check them out at Tomorrow Kids Tomorrow Kids Official on Instagram. And uh, our Instagram is at Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl. We have a backup account because we're always shadow banned and whatnot and Karen. So please check out our backup account. That's at Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl with a number two on the end. And you can always find me at Ashley MMA. And that's always in all the show notes. So this has been the first full video episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a little rough. I know it's not, I'm not going to lie. I know that, but um, stick with us. You know, we nailed down the audio format. We will nail down the video format and you can say you knew us way back when. So that's it, guys. Remember, be kind, be grateful, but don't take shit from anyone. I'll talk to you next week with a new guest and more tales of sex and violence. Bye.